do I see the relationship between international law and Turkey? Well, most importantly, Turkey is a very important, a very significant actor in international relations. Um, it is a bit of a cliche, but because of its geographical location, because of its historical, economical uh, positioning, it is obviously a very significant actor. Um, but this is a different matter when we look at uh, Turkey as an, as an actor, not of only of international relations, but as an actor of international law. Uh, when we look at Turkey as an actor of international law, um, I think it becomes a very interesting case study uh, to understand how international law operates um, and why we uh, always tend to insist that international law uh, interacts with states in very complex and in multifaceted ways. I think Turkey is a great example of that. Um, let me give you a few examples uh, to make this a bit more concrete. Uh, first of all, um, Turkey is an important actor and an important follower of international law. It is a party to the European uh, Convention on Human Rights and the European Court of Human Rights. The case law against Turkey in relation to that is very well known and famous. And there have been many occasions where, uh, after litigation, uh, Turkey has implemented uh, some of the judgments of the European Court of Human Rights. <coughs> and obviously, it hasn't implemented some other judgments there. So, but it is definitely a follower and some, some actor that is committed to international law. Secondly, uh, I think uh, Turkey can be seen as um, a resistor to international law. Turkey sometimes resists international law structures. One of the most famous examples of this is uh, the persistence uh, objection doctrine that it pursues in relation to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Now, there is a lot of debate on persistence objection, uh, but I think Turkey becomes a really interesting case study to see whether this doctrine is still alive and kicking and how we may be able to understand this doctrine in relation to uh, the law of the sea uh, matters. Uh, obviously, in a third way of an example, uh, we could see Turkey as a maker of international law, an active participant within the making of the international legal system. Uh, most recently, we see this uh, with some of the claims that um, Turkey has made in relation to uh, the bombings of ISIS in Syria and the bombings of uh, the PKK in North Iraq. Uh, Turkey has put forward um, a, an expansive, uh, perhaps a doctrine of preventive uh, self-defense, uh, which is a doctrine that uh, not many states at the moment adhere to, but it seems like uh, Turkey is seeing itself as an actor that might want to um, expand some of our interpretations uh, of certain doctrines on the use of force. So in a way, I've just told you that we shouldn't really treat Turkey as a sui generis, uh, perhaps, state. Uh, it is like any other, and you can uh, look at each different area of international law and the behavior of Turkey in the contemporary sense, uh, and actually um, you know, find that Turkey is uh, quite similar to others in terms of its following of international law, its resistance to it, as well as a maker or an attempting to be a maker of international law.